Good morning and welcome to what, as I'm sure you can tell from what's behind me, is a very special video. That is an Abarth 124 and this week I'm going to drive it to Italy with my mate Adam. Now, the reason we're doing that is partly because we wanted to, but also because the Abarth 124 is no longer for sale in the UK. They took it off the market in about April of this year. So we're taking it on a nice road trip to give it one last send off and just kind of remind ourselves how special and important cars like this really are. On the way, we're gonna be making lots of special stops, including a very exciting one today. We're going to a place called Remje, which if you know anything about motorsport, you'll understand the significance of. Now, let me show you a little bit around this car because it's quite a special thing. So as I mentioned, this is an Abarth one too far. One too far. One too, you went one too far, Abarth. So the Abarth one too far. Think of it as an Italian Mazda MX-5. The two share a lot of components. The biggest difference is that engine, which is all a bath. This is a 1.4 litre turbocharged engine, the same one that you'll find in a bath 595. Manual gearbox, rear wheel drive, proper, proper driver's car. I'm not gonna review it properly in this video. I'll probably make a separate video doing an actual review of the car. Um, but let me tell you some of my first impressions of it from having lived with it for 24 hours. It looks amazing, especially our one with this incredible rally livery on. A bath put this livery on for some press event a while back and they asked me, do you want us to take it off before your trip? And I was like, no. Other first impressions, it sounds amazing. <laughs> downsides that we've encountered so far. Not really a tall man's car. The whole wind across the head situation was quite interesting. Our overnight stop last night was where we are now, the beautiful city of Luxembourg. I've never been here before. It's so nice. Anyway, lots to do today. We're going to head to Remje. We'll see you there. Jack? Well, Adam, we're at Remje. This was the Grand Prix circuit for the French Grand Prix for the majority of the first half of the 20th century. And now it's public roads, but look, they keep these buildings maintained just so you can have a look around. Amazing. So cool. So cool. What, what are you doing? Well, we've got a drone, amazing, which we're going to use, you know, on the mountains and stuff. Fantastic. Uh, but I could use some practice. So, you know, no how, many how many times do you use the drone, Jack? Huh? How many times have you used it? Uh, once. Nice. We've just stopped off in a fairly random town to Dinamar Bums and look what we found. Tags! Six cylinder boxer engine, 430 PS. Rapid! So apparently in Germany, you're not allowed to drive a car that's got numbers on the side of it. Fortunately, my good friend here, Adam Smith, hey, has prepared. come up with a really great solution. Adam, do you want to show us what you've done? Absolutely. We have 
completely eliminated any sign of a number. Yeah. With um, some electrical tape. I mean, I don't even see anything there. Never I, leave I, home without it. I don't know what you're pointing at. Exactly. Uh, what number? I've just received a message from our Airbnb host for this evening. Okay. It says, uh, if you can't find me, I'll be in the barn milking the cows. Cows? Where are we, where are we staying tonight? In a barn? In a barn. Yeah, a Swiss barn. A Swiss? Well, that makes it all right then, doesn't it? Yeah, welcome home, my friend. Good evening. How are we? Go on, off you go. What do you think, mate? Gorgeous, right? Lovely. Look at the mountains. Have you seen the room yet? Haven't. Come have a look. Check it out. Straw fight. I mean, you said it was a barn with straw beds. It is. It's a barn. And what I was envisioning was like a boutique barn conversion. No, no, no. It's a barn. <laughs> At least we won't have to fight for the covers. Just one thing, Klaus, uh, Klaus the farmer, told me you must keep that door closed because otherwise you'll wake up to goats. And that's not, they don't do that kind of thing around here. I mean, I live close to the Welsh borders. I'm kind of <laughs> <laughs> so, we're in Switzerland, we made it. It's beautiful. The Alps are there. Tomorrow's the big one. Tomorrow we go over the mountains. We go down the Stelvio Pass, kind of the main event of this trip. And we can't wait, but until then, uh, we're sleeping in a barn. We're sleeping in a barn. So we're gonna go have a few beers so them. that um, so that that's easier. Hey, are you Shmi 150? Because I cheers. <laughs> <laughs> we're not weird. Today's the day. Adam Smith? Yeah. Famously a morning person. What do you think about the, uh, the hay bed? <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Morning, Rachel. Joey. Phoebe. Ross. Oh. Morgan, mm -hmm. yeah. come have some cheese and eggs, my friend. Nice. I love this. The cars have to be kept behind an electric fence because apparently the goats are infamous joyriders. Well, today's the day. After two days of a lot of motorways, a lot of traffic, and a lot of very straight B roads, it's time for the mountains. It's about four hours from here to the Stelvio Pass and another four hours to our overnight stop near Verona after that. So a big driving day. I can't wait. I can't wait to see what this car can do on a proper stretch of road. I can't wait to see the Stelvio Pass. Road trip. This is the reality of getting flyby shots. It's a mish. Oh, movie magic. <laughs> what have you got, Jack? Salami croissant. We're almost at the Stelvio, but we had to make a little stop because, well, look. Look where we are. <laughs> oh. I love you! Adam's not having a good time. 
Christ alive. Can't wait. Jesus. Can't oh, Christ. Jesus. I think I might have broken Adam. He's just uh, over there chain smoking. Hasn't spoken for about 20 minutes now. You alright, mate? Yeah. Should we, have a, should we go for a drive? In a minute. Okay. I promise I wasn't going that fast. He's just a horrible passenger. He does what my mum does when he starts going over 30 miles an hour. He anchors himself. To the... Oh! Hey! Hey! Round two. Adam, we just drove the Stelvio past. Unreal. Um, I don't really know what to say right now. The car's been amazing today. I've just been flying the drone for the last hour while Adam kind of drives up and down. Uh, it's worth mo uh, it's worth mentioning. Oh, nice C3, bro. Yeah. It's worth mentioning that most of the footage that you will have seen, especially of the drone, was actually not on the Stelvio Pass because it's sort of up there somewhere. And because it's famous, it's busy. It's congested. On yeah. Time. Listen, if you if you're thinking about doing something like this, go do the Stelvio Pass. Check it off the bucket list. Do and it then, early in the morning. Do it early in the morning, and then come north a little bit to where we are, which is called the Umbriel Pass. Uh, I think that's how it's pronounced. I'll put it off on screen um, because that's where we are right now. And it's an absolute it's, gem. It's the same, but it's empty. Also, we've got to talk about the car while we're here because it's just been perfect it's been perfect look i'm not just being nice to a bath because they lent it to me this was the perfect car for this road if we'd had any more horsepower or if we'd been any firmer or wider or lower we'd be off a cliff by now this thing was confidence inspiring it was supple enough to deal with the uneven parts of the road and it's just so much fun man what a day Chasing waterfalls, sticking to what you used to. <laughs> this is unreal. 